please welcome to the stage, Vijay Pandey. Good evening, and welcome to our second Build Summit. We call it Build for a couple of reasons. The first is because everyone in this room represents our best hope for building a future of better healthcare. Better drugs, better care, better access. The second is because Build is a process. It's a journey. We talk about Build the way our nation's founders talk about a more perfect union. For the founders, it was their work as leaders to be constantly perfecting. The same way as our work as leaders in healthcare to be constantly building. So how can we build the healthcare future we want, the future we need? I bet you think I'm going to say AI. <laughs> That's already come up today. But AI is a means, not an end. It's a tool that can help us achieve what I do want to talk about. An industrial revolution in life sciences and healthcare. Industrial revolutions have historically driven massive changes for humanity, where people live, where they work, how society is organized. But what's actionable about that insight? And where do we go from there? Let's break it down. Industrial means something very specific. It means shifting from bespoke to engineered, from an artisanal process like making textiles by hand to a process that can be automated and therefore that can be engineered. We love engineering because it's synonymous with consistent improvement that compounds over time. Think compounding interest. Think Moore's law for computing. Think Flatley's law for genomics. AI will change the world because it's going to industrialize endeavors that could previously only be done by artisans. And it's already happening. In life sciences, we are industrializing the process of discovery itself. In a world where we engineer biology, we don't discover drugs, we don't happen upon them by chance. We drive them. In the same way, healthcare delivery has also been a bespoke process. Recent developments in Gen AI are making it possible to create tools, automate tasks, and otherwise augment the work of knowledge workers. And it's not just coders and financiers. It's also physicians and scientists. This will be a massive transformation for the whole economy. That's a big deal. And that's why we call this a revolution. Revolutions produce new winners and new losers. They lead to major transitions, and sometimes jarring and painful ones. And here's the irony. To end up on the winning side of the revolution, to avoid the pain of disruption, you have to disrupt yourself. The big question is how? Let me walk you through the levels of disruption. Career disruption, disrupting yourself, career disruption, means making connections between radically different industries. What draws me to this topic is that I've disrupted my career twice. I began as the first employee at a video game startup. But then a few years in, I was hospitalized with a serious infection and took four days for them to diagnose and find the right antibiotic. That fundamentally, that fundamentally changed my mindset. I wanted to help make better medicines, better treatments. So I pursued an academic uh, career, becoming a professor at Stanford, founding the Folding at Home Distributed Computing Project. We pushed the limits of AI and computational drug design, yielding commercial spin-outs like Genesis Therapeutics. But as I saw the early developments taking place in the broader field of AI, biotechnology, and health, those technologies had clearly reached a pivotal point. And that is, why, that is what led me to found A6NZ Biohealth in 2015, where many of those innovations have now been translated at scale. But that begs the question, how do you disrupt at scale? Disruption at the scale of an entire company lies in social engineering. 
1999, Reed Hastings described his vision of a future where all entertainment came into the home streamed over the internet at a time when we all just watched DVDs. At one point, even though Netflix's DVD business drove all of the company's profit, they did a radical move of social engineering. They just stopped inviting the DVD employees to company meetings. They knew they needed to keep their focus and investment on the future, and it took a different team to do that. Disruption of entire industries means embedding the future in the present. Okay, that's a cryptic phrase. Let me unravel what that means. Years ago, NVIDIA was primarily a graphics company for gaming. But along the way, Jensen Wong made a perplexing decision to introduce CUDA, a computing architecture, onto NVIDIA's GPUs. CUDA didn't make the hardware better for gaming. If anything, it made it worse and more expensive. In the short run, there were quarters where the company did worse than it otherwise would have. In the long run, that decision has paid many times over. And due to that early vision, NVIDIA is now synonymous with AI. Ecosystem disruption, the hardest of all, requires leading existing partners into the future. It was the first decade of the 2000s. The iPod was the best thing Apple had going. But Steve Jobs actually had something even grander in the wings, the iPhone. While Apple could make an iPod on its own, an iPhone needed a lot more help. They couldn't build a worldwide telecommunications network on their own. And Apple had an even greater problem. The iPhone wasn't even a good phone. So their partner would have to believe that their core business, telephones, was going to be disrupted by a really bad phone. And they should join Apple on this journey to the future. After 18 months of secret negotiations, AT&T Wireless agreed to be their exclusive partner. And Jobs thereby successfully disrupted both Apple and the entire ecosystem. Okay, so some of you may be thinking, well, that's tech. That's not us. That's not life sciences. That's not healthcare. Well, before disruption, phones weren't tech. Before disruption, games weren't tech. Before disruption, movies weren't tech. We call them tech after they've been disrupted by tech. 20 years from now, people will be telling stories about us. What disruption stories will they tell? About disrupting ourselves as individuals, as companies, as an industry, as an ecosystem. Think about what it would mean for patients if we could work together to disrupt sick care, to disrupt that same pattern we've been in for too long, to reshape the arc of care, to change the way we prevent and treat illness. Without hyperbole, to fundamentally improve the very prospects for humanity. What could be more meaningful? What could be more exciting? What could be a better legacy? Welcome to Build. Thank you.